I think, I think it's I think it's lazy writing. I think we've had our third disfigured Bond bad guy in in a row now. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations. I have I've been hearing about this movie since Cannes. And I think it's maybe one of the most killer, killer films of all time. It's an incredible concept, amazing. Like, would you, Aaron, could you just start and tell us a little bit about your conceit? Uh, it's a movie about uh, an actor uh, who has the uh, opportunity uh, for some medical procedure to uh, change his face. And uh, he does so. He becomes uh, the most handsome man in the world. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and his life is ruined and his career is destroyed. It's a tough, it's a tough trade-off. Sebastian, I, it's a kind of a meta role, right? As someone who had to not only sit in the makeup chair for the transformation, but then also play sort of the counterpart. Were you trepidatious at all to do this because of like how much of your image would be a part of it? I, I think I was just more cautious and, you know, wanting to kind of serve the story the right way and obviously capture exactly what Aaron had envisioned and, um, and it was an important story, right? Because it's it's sort of a subject that doesn't really get a lot of, uh, you know, light on it. And and so I think we just wanted to do it right and and find whatever it took to make it right. Absolutely, Adam. Could you tell us just a bit about your character and and sort of your experience? So uh, Oswald, the character, is this really gregarious, successful, like warm guy, who just sort of turns up, and it's it's a very different character to me, particularly as a as a disabled actor. Yeah. I mean the roles I've normally been, been given are sort of like shy, retiring, sort of like meek and mild. So to go something on the other end of the spectrum, but it's also more like my real life personality was uh, was a fun one. And to have and the, the interplay Oswald has with all the other characters is is really interesting to watch. And it, it was a real feeling out process there as well but it, it, it was a great little great little role and I'm, I'm really grateful to have had the opportunity to work with Aaron again and also to work with these two fabulous actors <laughs> it's interesting that you said you get to play sort of an opposite end of a spectrum I saw a documentary a couple months ago um, about uh, people with cleft palate and the producer was telling me that he feels that people with facial differences are often portrayed very specifically in narrative stuff um, yes as villainous yeah, so, or or insidious so could you could you talk a bit about that well so, so normally there, there are uh, three sort of like kinds of um roles or, or tropes or stereotypes whatever vernacular one wants to use there's either the the villain that because i have a disfigurement i want to kill batman or james <laughs> bond then there's the the victim the, the woe is me small violin and then there's the the false hero like because I have a disfigurement, but I do like regular dude stuff, whatever regular dude stuff is, I'm somehow braver than, than the average guy. Yeah. Do you, I mean, do you think there's any sort of onus or responsibility on creatives to address that and change that? And how? Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's lazy writing. I think we've had our third disfigured Bond bad guy in, in a row now. And I just think it's, it's a bit lazy. And it's also why, why are non disabled people writing about about disability without consultation yeah. or, or any any of that malarkey. Because when, when that happens, the end result, it, you, you might fluke it and get it right once, but nine times out of 10, it's going to be really inauthentic and inaccurate. And so it's not only the disabled community appallingly, but disabled cinema lovers Absolutely. appallingly. It's really cool that, that this movie can you know sort of change that conversation um Renat, you've had this incredible couple of years and you're here with like 40 movies congratulations yeah it's been a little i'm tired <laughs> <laughs> tell us about your character in this so um yeah she's she's a kind of a girl next door very kind very um uh, a good person she doesn't really let herself fall in love with her neighbor that sebastian played edward in the Easy. beginning and she has a very strong vision for her life. She's in, she wants to be a director and, uh, and a writer. But because of how he looks, I don't think she allows herself to fall in love. And then when he disappears, she gets obsessed by telling his story and taking his story. Um, and she's kind of lost for a little bit. And, um, and then she meets Oswald. He comes into the 
mix of this theater play and he kind of gets her back to the good p path and like he's he, his character is so he's celebrating himself so much so she gets so inspired and kind of lets herself um, be who she is and yeah becomes happy again <laughs> <laughs> without saying too much <laughs> i have to ask because i think everyone connected so much with worst person in the world do you yeah. find that you're only getting scripts for like a certain type of actor or do people come up on the street and say like I'm not having kids and you're my hero or <laughs> <laughs> yeah I feel people really have a personal relationship to that movie so yeah. a lot of people come up with um yeah it's been so many different kind of meetings and stories that I've got to share with people but um no this character is very different <laughs> yeah it is awesome so Sebastian how long did you actually have to spend in makeup and hair and all that kind of stuff um it was probably like maybe one and a half to two hours. Okay, know? I think bad. it was more, you know, that the uh, Mike Marino who who did it was balancing another job at the same time as this. So it was a little bit like kind of catching him when he was available. But um, yeah, I mean, it was he he was great. He really understood what Aaron was looking for, and I think it was really specific, you know, to this fl film that we had someone like that. Do you find the process to be like meditative or helpful or is it really like awkward and painful? And <laughs> well, listen, anytime you have, right? Anytime you have any, you know, bit of time to kind of like reflect on what's the day uh, is good. I mean, here we had like 22 days. And oh, wow. It was like, you know, we were shooting on film and Aaron was doing a lot of one takes. And so there's only a certain amount of chances you have to, to sort of nail it. So I think anytime we had you know, it was it just went towards preparing for that. So I think, Aaron, you did you shot only one takes on a lot of stuff. Well, we shot well, a lot of uh, um, oneers, as they call them. So we would, we try to cover a scene in one or two takes, as, as few as possible. Um, we would get as many takes as we could. We were twenty two days. We would get maybe three, four takes of a, of, of any of any scene, and you know, once we felt we got it, we'd move on to the next thing. So a big part of the, the spiral that um, Aaron mentioned is, I, I think, essentially about an actor losing a part. Can you all remember a time when you lost a part and how it felt or something you really wanted that didn't come through? Uh, no. No. Yeah. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I think I uh, hyperventilated in an audition one time. I auditioned for that movie Mother by, by Darren Aronofsky oh, no. for one of the, oh. one of the, the brothers, Dom Hall Gleason, yeah. came and so it had it. And I, I got really uh, very nervous about that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get it, so. Oh, okay. well, you're, you're doing okay. It's all, it's all right. <laughs> you're fine. It's always one part, right? It's always something. Yeah. Um, Aaron, do you find that when you do, like, you know, I think the movie's been praised for its sort of, um, you know, its, its, its sense of realism and, and obviously its high tension. Do you find that when you have concepts like this, they're easy to go out and make? Like, how is the... Sorry, I keep saying Oh, sorry. Is it, is it a concept like this, which I think some people think is a little, you know, um, it's a little bit of a heavy lift. Um, is that easy for you to go out and get financing for and sell and make? Uh, it's impossible. It's Sebastian. <laughs> it was Sebastian. I, you know, I talked to Sebastian. He, he read the script and he said, I want to make this movie right now. Basically, I have some time in the next, uh, this summer. And um, uh, within uh, a very short period of time, we had financing and we were shooting in, within seven weeks of me meeting um, but Sebastian. I think pretty much my second email to uh, to Aaron was, have you seen the movie Worst Person in the World? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah, it's, it's like, do you yeah, think we, were thinking, we could even we were, we were possibly both on the get same her? Page, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was, I'm like, do it now before it's yeah. never gonna happen. I'll bring my own costume. Um, so we're obviously we're here today with Audible. I'm just curious, what do you guys think about audio as a storytelling sort of vehicle? And are you podcast people? You do you do you like podcasts? I'm on a huge really podcast guy. Yeah, yeah, because I, I do I do a lot of commuting and traveling. So you you know you put your headphones on, listen to a lot of comedy. I'm a huge pro wrestling mark, so I listen to a lot of the wrestle talk ah. stuff. Um, I've got a lot of recommendations while I've been here to check out movies, things like I'm a big fan of Switch Rage Sisters, mm. which puts a real focus on on like women in the film industry. Oh, cool. I, I really like that one. And what else am I listening to? And I'm just loads, loads. Of, there's no such thing as a fish. 
is a podcast done by the researchers of a panel show in the UK called QI. And it's all like the little weird facts they've learned researching for the show that, that week. And it's really interesting and, and really funny and quite light. Um, that, one's, that one's quite good. Am I allowed to say I like Joe Rogan or is that going to get me cancelled? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, okay. Okay, I know who Joe Rogan is. <laughs> I'll meet you all halfway. Smartless is really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Very those good. guys, like, and, and the Dak Shepard one is yeah. also another one that's really great. Yeah. Um, American Life is another good one. I mean, there's like some. Variety like, podcast. Variety. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, actor I, on actor, that's always the. Just yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much. Um, just to just to finish up, I, I feel like as an alumni, I have to ask you: How do you feel about the state of Marvel and their storytelling and what's going on with all those guys? I'm I, I'm excited. I'm I'm going to go back basically uh, in uh, in, a, in a month or so, and I'm with Thunderbolts. I, I've missed it. Yeah, with Thunderbolts. Yeah, and it's going to be a great cast. And uh, you know, it's like the <clears throat> batting average is so high, and it's just so difficult to always you know, land everything in the right way. Sure um, but it's, it's always been a great experience. And I, you know, I'm, I think with this one, particularly because of also Jake Schreier, who did beef and everyone yeah. else that was involved there has come on board. So I think there's a lot of good things. Well, do you think Downey should come back? I mean, he seems like he's doing fine. <laughs> I, I mean, wasn't he here? Like he was here. He was here, right? Here? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, he was missed him. Damn. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Congratulations. Thank We're so excited you. for your Thank premiere. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.